Doctor Who here at San Diego Comic Con, and uh, this is truly an honor. I'm speaking with Peter Capaldi. Hello there. How are you doing? How are you, sir? Uh, season nine. Everyone's excited. Uh, this is your first Comic Con doing stuff with the Doctor. How's it feel to, to go through all of this? It's really, really exciting. I mean, people keep saying to me, are you nervous? Uh, that's making me nervous now. People keep saying, are you nervous? Because obviously we're going to have to go into a uh, whole H with uh, many thousands of Doctor Who fans. Uh, but that's wonderful. It's a delight, the idea that we're going to see so many people who like the show. And I took, I, I took a little walk last night and I started to, 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 to taste some of the, the, the carnival atmosphere and see people dressed up in the street as, you know, Spider-Man or Imperial Stormtroopers. And obviously a lot of people from the show who, who were fans of the show uh, noticed me and started chatting to me. And, and I ended up being led down to the convention center. And it was just lovely. There's such, an, there's such a warm, supportive atmosphere here. And it's great to be around. There's also a lot of ridiculousness around this whole event. Yeah, but what a laugh, isn't it? What a laugh, what a gas, isn't it? Fantastic. I kept saying, because uh, our people were sort of saying, oh, you need security here and all that stuff. And I said, well, you know, this is a once in a lifetime experience. We've got to go and do this. We've got to go and just meet the fans and see, see how they feel and see what that's like. Did it ever uh, come to mind to do what Matt Smith did one year where he put the Homer Simpson mask and walked the floor and nobody knew it was him? Well, I'm not finished yet. I may yet do that. I don't know what mask I might wear, but uh, yeah, I might do that. Actually, it was very sweet. They showed us around the hall last night uh, with all the merchandise, which I wanted to rifle through, but I couldn't do it. But it was absolutely empty. It was strange and eerie. You know, it was like the end of uh, Raiders of the Lost Ark. Um, but uh, yeah, I don't know. I might do that. Who, see it? Who knows? You know what? One of the biggest things being, being sold on the floor is your uh, Funko Pop figure. Funko Pop? So what's a Funko Pop for? I don't know what that is. Uh, it's a small little thing. They're kind of like really gigantic heads. There's some are bobbleheads, some are just little <laughs> figures. Yes, yes, no, I have seen that. Yeah, no, that's great. Yeah. That's funny. Yes. I, I, I have to approve those things. They bring them into my trailer and they say, do you approve of this? And I say, yes, of course. <laughs> Who is it? Who's that supposed to be? That's oh, it's you. me. All right, okay. Where'd the gray hair come from? <laughs> and then you ask, can I get one of those? And they charge you for no, it. No, they go like, no. I, I have no merchandise. <laughs> Season 9 comes this fall, uh, of course you're returning as the Doctor, lots going on uh, involving uh, Clara, yourself, uh, the Master. In this season, are there any kind of um, hints or ties to your appearance in Day of the Doctor and the search for Gallifrey? Uh, yes. That's all you can say. <laughs> well, you know, it's really hard. Uh, right at this moment, I'm here at Comic Con, but I'm actually in the middle of filming episode 11. Uh, which is part of a uh, part of the finale uh, of this season, uh, so I know stuff that is unfolding in episode eleven, uh, and I know certain things that are happening in episode twelve. I don't know. I haven't read episode twelve, so I don't know exactly what's going on there. But uh, in answer to your question, uh, you'll have to wait and see. You'll have to wait and see, really. I'll have to wait and see. True, I haven't read it. <laughs> Can you at least tell me what the Doctor's role is in Lego Dimensions? He is uh, the best, uh, uh, the best character in it. That's what his role is. Uh, yes, you can get, you can go on there with uh, Batman and uh, and Gandalf and Wild Style and go through various levels. And one of the levels you can go to is a Doctor Who level, which is very sophisticated. I was really knocked. I mean, I did the voice for it, but the, obviously the game wasn't exi wasn't in existence when I did the voice. Uh, but when I saw it yesterday, there was this huge kind of cinematic uh, experience. And also they have this thing: they have all twelve Doctors, and you can, if you decide to play as, for instance, the first Doctor. Uh, the TARDIS changes to his to fit, TARDIS. To fit that time. And the, the most amazing thing is it, it goes into monochrome for his. <laughs> so you're playing in black and white. <laughs> when you're inside his TARDIS, it's in black and white. Very but the rest Very. And you know, those Lego figures are so ironic. They're so. I mean, I think just by being a Lego figure, you're automatically <laughs> funny. <laughs> but they maintain the sort of. You know, the guys who did the game are. They love Doctor Who so much, so their, their, their affection for it is so sincere. Uh, but what you get is that great wit, because they also know a good joke when they see it. Uh, but they also know a good monster, and they also know, you know that, that the TARDIS is fabulous, and the Doctor should, that the Doctor should go and rescue people, and there are great Daleks in it, and a Cyberman King and stuff. It's fantastic. I love how passionate you are about it. You know, it's just a laugh. How great can it, you know, what a fantastic position to be in at this age, to be showing all this stuff, to giving all these toys, that, uh, to be part of this uh, 
empire of Doctor Who is, de is a delight. I'm running out of time with you, so my last question for you is uh, taking over and getting this role of an iconic, uh, which was a part of uh, British history, now world history, being Doctor Who and taking the Doctor role, but coming off Malcolm Tucker from the thick yeah. of it, where uh, most of America was uh, recognizing you from because of Netflix. They were yeah. up on the Netflix there. How was the transition as far as uh, in your head going from Malcolm Tucker to the Doctor? Well, it was, it was quite easy in some way because, in fact, it, I think it would be true to say that, that Malcolm is further away from me in real... He was more of a performance. You know, right. I'm less like him. I'm more like the Doctor than I am like Malcolm. So, uh, in a way, that, that when you play the Doctor, you sort of bring him close to you. You know, that's what the whole gig is, is you bring him as close to yourself as possible. So, it really was uh, abandoning. Uh, all the tropes uh, of Malcolm, but w w which wasn't difficult because they were, it was a definite performance and, and there, were, there, were, there were mechanical things that I employed in Malcolm that I wouldn't with the Doctor. Did they ever ask you to Malcolm it up a little on Doctor Who set? I know, sometimes <laughs> on, on, on bad days I sometimes do that automatically. <laughs> Peter Capaldi, season nine this fall for Doctor Who. Thank you so much, it's been an honor. You're very welcome, it's lovely to talk to you.